you want to bench test a single wire uh, narrow band O2 sensor, so like on OBD1 applications, these things produce a DC voltage, and you want to use a propane um, ground to the body. There's your positive here. We're going to be on DC volts. As you see, we're not really producing any voltage right now. Um, and But this thing won't really start producing voltage until it gets hot enough. Because uh, when I first started putting the flame on there, I got about point, you know, zero 0.08 or so. Um, but it wasn't even 100 millivolts. But once it got hot, boom, it immediately started working. This is a brand new sensor. The old one wasn't doing anything. Anyways, uh, this thing uh, will easily hit uh, above 800 millivolts. You should cycle to as max of one uh, volt DC uh, from what I was reading on the internet. This one easily, very quickly, goes up to uh, 800 uh, millivolts. And then as soon as you remove it, it goes back down to uh, zero. I'll show you this here. Propane. All you gotta do is just they warm it up right now. Okay, and I'm I'm just giving a little bit and taking it back off right there. Okay, giving it fuel now, taking away, giving a little bit. 700. There you go. And uh, you know I'm just just giving a little bit and taking it away. It actually does get cherry red in just a very small portion of the, the of that sensor. To be able to get that amount of voltage, I mean, I'm only giving it flame for about a half second to a second. The whole reason why you get a high voltage reading on this oxygen sensor is because when you're heating it with flame, you're actually putting the flame itself on the sensor, so all of the fuel has not completely been burned off yet, which that's why it shows a rich condition. Even though the stoichiometric ratio of propane is 15.67 to 1, which is higher than gas at 14.71, like I say, you're still going to show a high voltage because you're putting the flame with the fuel into the sensor, and it has not completely burned all that fuel yet.